Hello, everybody, and welcome to Top 5 New Comics for March 12th and 13th of 2024. I'm, as always, Chris. We got some awesome books to talk about. I just want to say thank you, DC. You're going to be switching to Wednesdays again soon, the way it was intended to be. And I don't have to say two dates anymore. I'm going to have to say one here soon. So we're looking forward to that. Enough of my complaining about that. Let's get on some comics, starting with... Avengers Twilight number four. This is written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Daniel Acuna. I, I mean, we've been going on and on and on about Avengers Twilight, how much I enjoy this book. It's been great. And it's doing that thing that a great series like this does where we introduce an element in the issue. We have a great cliffhanger that goes back to the last issue. And then we do it again and again and again. And I don't think it's a huge spoiler to say that Thor is in this issue. It's right there on the cover. His intro in the last issue was so epic. It gave me chills, not just reading it, but then talking about it on the podcast, Fortress Comic News. And going to the comic shop next week, be like, did you, did you read it? Oh, it, I am loving this book so much. It's hard to really put into words how good it is. So yes, it's on my list every every week it's available. But there's a reason for that. And that reason is it's really freaking good. After that, I've got Ultimate Black Panther number two. This is written by Brian Hill with art by Stefano Caselli. Man, the Ultimate Universe is just killing it. Absolutely killing it. I'm really loving what they're building here with three very unique and distinct books, but all of great quality. I thought the first issue of this was a great introduction into Black Panther, who he is in this universe, where he stands, while at the same time being so familiar, especially to people who may only be fans of the MCU. And we're looking to get into comics uh, as few as they may be. Hopefully there's more, but this was the closest to an MCU Black Panther I've seen in a while, to be fair. I don't read every Black Panther book, so I could be off on that. And then to introduce these cool new villains that are versions of Moon Knight, basically, and uh, that they work for Ra and Khonshu. And obviously the maker having some sort of control over what's going on, even if he's not directly there, there's so much good here to enjoy. And Ultimate Black Panther, it may be, it's probably my number two. I still think I really love Spider-Man the most. And I even really like the first issue of the X-Men book that they did. It's, listen, we're only a couple issues in. You can find these issues. I know in the secondary market, some of the issue ones have gone up in price, but I've seen at my comic shop and other local comic shops, I'm still on the shelves at base price. Go and check them out. I think that the Ultimate Universe is just getting off to an amazing start and we're really enjoying it. And I'm just, an Ultimate Universe book is top of my list right now when it comes out. Maybe second this week is Avengers Twilight, but they're always top of the list. It's always first day Wednesday night when I pull out three or four comics to read. An ultimate book is on that list. So, I yeah, Ultimate Black Panther, really good. And kudos to Brian Hill, a guy who I knew very little about. He was working hard behind the scenes, doing a bunch of cool stuff. Jumped on that Blade book. And I'm just such a Blade fan that I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy a Blade book. And I loved it. And now he's on this. He's doing good. I got to go back and give Brian Hill his props because I he's got to have some books in the past that I like because I've just been enjoying the two books right in a row that he's done for Marvel that are in my purview are two top tens in my eyes. Like they're just... The dude's obviously got talent. I need to look more into his career. After that, I've got 
The Outsiders, number five. This is written by Jackson Lanzig and Colin Kelly, aka The Hive Mind, with art by Robert Carey. I, I remember when we had The Hive Mind on the podcast, Fortune Comic News, and <laughs> talked about doing this Outsiders book. And I was like, this is the test they've always done properties that I really adore. They were doing Batman beyond they're doing guardians of the galaxy. They're doing captain America. They've always been on properties. I absolutely love. And now they're on one that honestly I could, I could care less about. I, I'm not a big outsiders fan. I never really was. And even when I did enjoy an outsiders book, it's usually because Batman was very much involved and his character drags the book to the finish line in my view. That being said, these two bring this group brings an outsider's book with no Batman that just has Duke and Batwoman. And then this new character, the drummer and I'm hooked. Every issue is a one and done story. We're telling cool things. I thought the last issue may have been a, a, a dip and would I enjoy it from the book, but still good overall, just been a blast going through the series. I, it's one of the shocks of the year for me that the outsiders is a book, not only on my poll list, but that I'm really enjoying. And that's a credit to Lansing and Kelly, like just being amazing writers, creating amazing stories and, and doing all these things. And then the art artists throughout the book have been really great too. They've, it, the art's been top notch and that also helps pull the story forward as we are a visual medium here. But I, I don't know much more to say other than if you were sleeping on the outsiders from these two, from these three, I would suggest going back and giving it a shot. If the first issue doesn't pull you in, I get it. Move on. But I really think this is a great book that more people should be reading and more should be, people should be talking about because it is a blast. After that, we've got No One, number eight. This is written by Brian Bucolato with art by Geraldo Borges. And we give a writing credit to Kyle Higgins here as well. So I'll, I'll mention his name. I've read into it. I think Kyle's more involved in the podcast, which we'll talk about, but I could be wrong here. So no one's this vigilante crime book. There's the serial killer on the loose. Uh, there was this uh, vigilante called no one that ended up finding out who it was. And now we're kind of after the fact and we're not sure if, so the murders have started again, and we're not sure if it's the same person doing it again or if it's a newcomer just copycatting everything. And the reason I know that is because somebody admitted to the crimes and it was in jail. Now, obviously, we're eight issues in, so there's a lot of story that's happened since then. But what I really love about this book is it's it's very family oriented and that everyone in the main cast involved is all family, which is why I have a theory that no one is also part of that family. Maybe one of the sons in this story that is dead, even though we never see a body, <laughs> which my rule in comics, if I don't see a body, they're not dead. And it's just, it's this great spin around going back and forth, trying to figure out who did it, going to, uh, the cop whose son's in jail to the local newspaper trying to figure things out. And then how, how politics gets involved in all this. And it's this great world that these two have created to make this great story. And then one of the things that's been really unique, awesome and fun about it is they do a podcast that comes out the same day that has like Patton Oswalt and a few others voice acting, playing as characters from the comic. And those characters are the reporters for the newspaper 
doing a podcast for the newspaper. So you're listening to something that's sincerely done as a crime podcast, but it is audio drama based in the universe of the book. And it adds another layer because you, you read the book and then I usually the next day at work and listening to the podcast as I'm doing it. And you get enthralled in the world and the story and what's going on. And some of the drama too, like they've added these moments that are very dramatic that can only be done through, through podcasts or, or just a TV show or something like that. And no other book that I can think of has or is doing what they're doing here. So they really are creating this multimedia approach to a comic book. I'll be fascinated to see down the line if maybe I could talk to one of these two gentlemen and how not just the financials, but how the intermingling is working out. And if they're seeing do the sales match the podcast or more people listen to the podcast than reading the book or vice versa, because it is just something that nobody else is doing. It's, it's awesome. I, I think this book's really great. Uh, understanding it's eight issues in, so it might be tough to catch up on, but if you have a shot, I, I got to assume there's a trade of at least the first six, five or six issues in it. Um, it's a really good book. And if, if it matters to you, uh, I am very much invested in the massive verse. This is a massive verse title. So I will be also interested to see how they tie that into like Radiant Black and Rogue Sons and all these other great books that got going on. And it, yeah, it's just been a phenomenal title that... Once again, much like The Outsiders and my next book, I wish got more attention because it is a truly great title that I am thoroughly enjoying. So after that, I've got The Weatherman, Volume 3, Number 3. This is written by Jody Lehep with art by Nathan Fox. This is another mainstay for the series. The Weatherman, I'll just put it here. Probably my favorite, at least sci-fi comic right now, and that includes Saga, everybody. And I would even be willing to go as high as saying probably the best sci-fi comic going right now. Um, Weatherman is just a, a great, great book. It's so... It's so fantastical and witty and at the same time grounded. And it manages to, to weave these different story arcs through the different volumes that all follow one guy and a scenario that he's found himself in. That's so, excuse me for saying this, but it's so out of this world. Like, <laughs> I, I can't talk up Weatherman enough. It's If you've never read Weatherman, please, please do yourself a favor and pick up the first couple volumes. It's just so, so good. And I honestly, I checked it out when it first came out because I was going through, honestly, when it first came out, I was going through a phase where I checked out a lot of things and I was more open to checking things out and I mean that in a financial manner <laughs> because of where I was in life. And this is one of those that I'm so glad because I think if this was, if the first volume was announced today, I may or may not be into it. And I might have missed out on one of my favorite comics of all time, hands down. That's where this book stands right now. And uh, it's just, y'all got to check out Weatherman, please. It's so, so good. We have three books here that I I really want to get more eyes on, more attention on, because they are so good. So everybody, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember, you can find me, as I said, like eight times during this on the podcast, Forge Comic News Weekly, talking about comic book news and uh, talking to creators, uh, doing interviews, all that fun stuff. That, that shows a blast. We have a great uh, listener base and... I'm always thankful for that. I'd love to see you all there checking it out. You can also see me a couple times a week on Chris's Comics Corner, my Substack, 
Uh, currently doing the retro reread series where we're reading through all of Rom the Space Knight and my crowdfunding spotlight where you can see cool crowdfunding books that are on mostly Kickstarter, to be honest, but I've done a Zoop title and I'm always looking at the different crowdfunding platforms to see what the best book is, or at least the one I'm most interested in in that moment and spotlighting it, bringing it out there to everybody. So if you're interested in truly independent comics, it's a great place to go and check out what's cool. And uh, and we do some reviews as well. We talk about some some comics that get a little bit early and we review. And I have a blast doing those, so I appreciate it. And if you want to support this series, this channel, like, subscribe, share, comment down below. So make sure when you subscribe, you hit that bell notification button. So whenever a new video goes up, you get it. And uh, that is everything I have for you this week. See y'all here next week.